Welcome to CivilNet. Today we'll be speaking with the co-founders of the Aurora Humanitarian Initiative, Ruben Vartanian and Nubar Afeyan. Thank you so much for being here. We hope that this will be one of many interviews with you about the various aspects of Aurora. The initiative has become so big and recognizable. The expectations I'm sure you have seen have also risen. So thank you for the opportunity to speak about some of the aspects of your goals and visions for the program. Um, we, uh, we've seen that uh, when the Aurora Prize was initiated, you announced that um, it was in memory of the Armenian genocide survivors and in gratitude to those who saved them. Today, Aurora is present and visible in 14, 15 countries around the world and not just in Armenia. Um, let's talk about this impact and this direction. Why is Aurora going global? First of all, I'm very glad to be here with my friend, partner, and um, co-founder of Aurora Initiative. I think it's uh, critical what we started in Armenia become global because we're talking about something which is not only linked to Armenian story, despite we are all, of course, coming from the history of the Armenian genocide, but our main message is about Aurora is uh, we're not only remembering and thankful for the people who save us, but we're talking about something which is becoming critical again and again and in many places in the world. And human values, humanitarian behavior, it's all the issues which people considering it's becoming more important for people who doesn't matter which nationality, which religion we are. It's what we try to do with Aurora, we try to talk about something which is basic for everybody, every person who is uh, feeling what he is a something to do in this world. We want to engage him, we want to give him the opportunity to feel part of something which we want to be participated. That's why for us, was Aurora was just important movement which we started in Armenia, but we always been planning to go global. Yeah, I, I think it's, uh, it's also good to keep in mind that the original inspiration being what happened during the Armenian Genocide, at that time the plight of Armenians was a global issue. And whether you were in the US or whether you're in Europe and different places, people were trying to get involved and save, save Armenians. And so uh, it makes sense to us that a, a movement born out of the experience of Armenians now 100 years later uh, also be relevant and productive for the whole world. Um, there's a, uh, many years ago, I was introduced to a poem by Siva Kabudukian in which she describes Armenian diaspora as a tree whose branches are reaching all over the world. And I think that any project Armenians do increasingly should also think of themselves that way, which is deeply rooted in our experience, mm -hmm. but the branches re reaching the whole world, because that's the only way we will become significant again for the whole world. Mm -hmm. And this decision to go global, is it also about Armenia's image and visibility in the world? And if yes, then uh, what is it you think um, or you thought about Armenian image and visibility in the world that needed improving? It's not a question about the image, it's a question about what we are like small nation with the not perfect economical situation, decided that we can give something back to the world. I think it's a very interesting example because people today in the world, most of the living saying, oh, it's a rich country, United States, Europe, and they need to be providing all the assistance and help to the other part of the world. Here was our main message is was the, despite we're in a difficult situation, despite we are continue building our own nation and trying to recover from the genocide and many other things happened after the earthquake, we are thankful and we believe you can do something for others despite of your situation because if you're feeling inside yourself this is important, you can give the, the other people's help and assistance. And I think it was a very important message because many of people in different parts of the world facing the many challenges and sometimes we are very feel alone and here we can say, no, you're not alone. It's the people who are around the world putting their lives on the risk, people who are willing to give uh, help and assistance to others without looking something getting back. Mm -hmm. I think it's a critical message was for beginning being global. 
And of course, it's helping Armenia become attractive. Instead, where is Armenia? Because let's be honest, most of the people don't know where is Armenia. In. We know about Armenian history, some of them. We know about Armenian Christianity or about Armenian genocide, about Armenian, some very famous people. But where is Armenia? What is Armenia today? How is Armenia living today? Of course, it's helping. This project is helping people to become more curious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where's people coming? Who they are? Mm -hmm. Let's look, let's read about their history. Let's read about what, what, what we're doing today. Mm -hmm. And uh, Aurora encompasses a lot: the prize, the dialogues. How is the Armenian aspect sustained in all of this? Well, the Armenian aspect um, is vital to to this. It's the it's the kind of underlying uh, inspiration and it's hard to detach what we're doing from that inspiration. Mm -hmm. It's also, I'd say, our source of somewhat legitimacy. I mean, the reality is that neither Ruben nor I, uh, maybe our third co-founder, Vartan Grigorian, who has spent a career in philanthropy and being in institutions that deal with these things, less so. But the two of us, to some extent, for this community are, are strangers. And um, I think people wonder why this is an important uh, theme to us. And it's an important theme to us because we're Armenians. Mm -hmm. uh, we're global Armenians. We're not mm -hmm. Armenians of any particular type. But, but we certainly, uh, the Armenian side of this is why we're doing it. Now, having said that, if it becomes an Armenian project only, then its impact to the world will be uh, quite limited. Uh, and that's why we've had to play this this duality. It is interesting for people to discover, as Ruben was saying, the topic of Armenians and Armenia, which mm -hmm. are related but not the same topic, mm -hmm. through this uh, venue. I, as an example, I'll give you, I, we had the occasion just last week in Boston to meet with a small group of philanthropists, you know, non-Armenian, mm -hmm. uh, and introduce them to this project, which, which they are in turn interested in international projects. Mm -hmm. And the reaction that the, what they gave to both the way the prize is structured, mm -hmm. the fact that the, the laureate is given the opportunity to give away a million dollars. These are people mm -hmm. all, all of their lives that so they have been receiving donations mm -hmm. to turn around and give to worthy causes they think mm -hmm. should receive support. That aspect, the aspect, the theme of kind of these heroes that are mm -hmm. showing how people move their, their generosity into some act and then inviting others, the gratitude and action. These were all resonant themes, and it can't but get people to say, well, why are these people even doing this? Mm -hmm. And when they realize that it's deeply rooted in our experience, um, I think the whole thing comes together. Mm -hmm. Let's talk, bring it back to Armenia a bit. Armenia has so many needs, and uh, some people would say, or you always say, you know, you're doing so, uh, you're trying to be big and global, and some would say, um, why not also local? Are you also working towards local or is that the objective of the partner organization idea? First of all, we <clears throat> from first day tried to do a lot internally also and if you can see what was done the last three year, two years. The Tom Katena visited not only Yerevan, he visited different Margaret went to Karabakh and we tried to promote this type of the <clears throat> behavior locally and we engage a lot of volunteers, more than 300, 500 people being engaged every year to be part of this process. And we organize the lectures and, and different other meetings in uh, the universities, which we believe very important for young, especially young generation will get the chance to l learn and understand better what we're doing. Mm -hmm. We definitely believe it's very important for uh, local, our own people understand better and be part of this mm -hmm. because we don't want to look like it's a big global initiative which has uh, just been occasionally happened, we happened in Armenia. It's not easy, it requires a lot of effort and we're doing uh, um, definitely a lot of effort for this, achieving this goal. And this year, for example, we'll do in April 24 when we are being or a traditional announcement of the mm -hmm. finalist, uh, we'll do special discussion with the Armenian elite about how they see the project, what they Criticism and some some of the suggestions will be very welcome, mm -hmm. and we're trying to give this type of the open dialogue with this. But also, of course, Aurora is a part of the much bigger vision, and it needs to be always right to explain this. Aurora is not like standalone project. Aurora is a part of the uh, vision which we with Nubar and other our partners developed in 15 years ago, more 17 years ago, 
with Armenia 2020, how to make Armenia prosper, how to make Armenia prosper, not only economically, but also mentally. Mm -hmm. And this is all part of the project we're doing with the IDEA Foundation, including education, healthcare, science technology, where we've been today. Yesterday we've been board meetings of the Science Technology Foundation, we've been board meeting of Ameria Bank, which is, again, is all part of the same ecosystem which we've been developing the last 15 years together. Yeah, maybe I'll just briefly add that you know, when we first uh, announced the Sorora project, in fact, mm -hmm. most Armenians said, why are you wasting your money on such a thing? Why don't you just spend it on reducing poverty in Armenia? Mm -hmm. And of course, that's a very understandable feeling. Um, the fact is that the amount of money we've spent on Aurora and those who have supported us would, would maybe be 5% of the money we've spent on Armenia's economic development for the last 17 years. And I don't think people realize that because they think that this is somehow a project in and of itself. As Ruben said, just to be clear, 17 years ago with the Armenia 2020 project, which was very much both a, a long-term planning process, but also a, a social awareness initiative to get people to start thinking about the future. Uh, and then the National Competitiveness Foundation, which was a multi-year private-public partnership with the government that that really spurred a number of the projects that eventually ended up being conducted by the IDEA Foundation that Ruben mentioned, which has been the, 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 the originator, founder of the Datev Ropeway, the UWC Diligence School, and many, many other projects, all the way to today, when, where uh, you look at the, the science technology area and many other areas. So when you put it all in context, um, I'd say that we are and plan to continue to work on securing a better future for Armenian citizens in a way that a private you know, group can do, let alone diasporans can do. Uh, uh, we have always considered the government to be responsible for the present and all those folks that want to see a brighter future to be responsible for helping at least make the future easier and better. Um, and Aurora is not a project that in any way interferes with that. And if we never did Aurora, I doubt very much we would spend any more resources than we're doing here because we're spending as much as is reasonably spendable. Mm -hmm. um, there is, uh, and anybody who does development work here realizes, there is a generational issue, there's a capacity building issue, and we, can't, we cannot wait for the country to advance uh, faster and better, and, 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 and as it does, I think we'll attract more and more resources. So that's an important thing that you're asking because it does look from the point of view of somebody who only knows Aurora, people question it, but if they know the totality of the work this is part of, this ends up being a bit of a, a bridge to the rest of the world on a level that is not just about, hey, give us money because we're poor. Mm -hmm. That's, that cannot be the only message that they hear from Armenians. And as far as awareness and visibility, the Aurora Awareness Index shows that the Aurora name is recognizable to roughly 10% of the world's population. Now that's a huge resource to work with. How does Armenia benefit from such visibility? We're both coming with the background of being uh, immigrants. And um, in the 21st century, I think it's becoming critical is that the network of the people becoming engaged together by doing something together. Mm -hmm. We believe it's one of the biggest opportunity for our nation to use this time to really come collegially uh, unified around some of the projects. That's why, mm -hmm. in my opinion, whatever we're doing is an example of how people coming from different backgrounds, with different way, apart from America, I'm from Russia and doing something jointly for Armenia and for the world. It's showing the network, power of network, power of the trust, of network of people who really unify around big vision, big idea, and trying to do something together. So I think it's a very important element of engaging people and, and bringing them part of this process, which we are very proud to see how supporters, we don't like world donors, because we believe it's a supporter of this project, the number is increasing. We started from a couple of people, went to the 70 people, where last year was 200 people, and we see more and more people. And then not only they are very rich, some people, I, we got now a letter from one of the guy with a bakery and from Orenburg, the owner of a bakery shop in Orenburg, said, I want to transfer every month $100 to Aurora because my grandmother was safe. 
And this is exactly what we wanted. People feel this is a part of the way project, way engagement and way ownership. It was a very critical element. That's why uh, we are believing this is the part of the powerful uh, element of this all. What we're doing is uh, engaging and trying to build this type of the mm -hmm. uh, feeling of the doing this all together. Your goals are very. Your goals and vision are very uh, large. Is there a time frame? Well, there's, there's the, the, <laughs> the goals and visions accompany the particular project. Mm -hmm. uh, in the case of Aurora, when we launched the project, we said that for us, the period 2015 to 2023 mm -hmm. were symbolic in that that's roughly the period 100 years ago where Armenians suffered the most. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so we launched the project to have its mm -hmm. founding stages for those eight years. Our hope and expectation is that the project will find its place in the world as a, as a value-added uh, um, thing. Uh, there, the world has many, many prizes. We don't consider Aurora principally a prize. Mm -hmm. the, group, the world has many humanitarian initiatives. Surprisingly, none that seems to be going after what it is that Aurora is going after. Uh, Aurora is a lot more about human values than it is about human rights. Mm -hmm. Human rights attracts a lot of legal, governmental, and other organizations. Mm -hmm. Human values are somewhat cons you know, covered by religions. Unfortunately, historically, religions have divided people. Um, but there are human values that are universal. And among them is the spirit of people risking their lives to save others, to help others, mm -hmm. on the one hand. And on the other hand, people being moved by a sense of gratitude to do something. Mm -hmm. And I think the latter, you know, my sense is that just about any philanthropy that's done mm -hmm. has as its roots a sense of gratitude. I don't think unless you're born into wealth, which doesn't describe much of the wealth in the world, a lot of the wealth in the world is being earned, uh, that people feel like they were given a chance and they want to do something useful with that chance. Well, how to channel that chance to people that can leverage it the best the ones that are actually taking, working on some of the toughest problems in the world, um, there is no time limit for that. In fact, we've said in the past that you know, we wish in a way that Aurora didn't exist because Aurora wouldn't exist as long as there wouldn't be modern day saviors trying to help other people survive. And if there were no conflicts, there would be no saviors. If there were no saviors, we wouldn't need to do this. Until that time, it looks like there's a need for this. And so what form it'll take long term, um, what reach it will have. We, you know, we're both entrepreneurs and one of the things you learn as an entrepreneur is that you are somewhat of, an, of a conductor. You're not really an instrumentalist. At the end of the day, the music is made by the pieces that come together under your conducting power. But, and we'll see. If the music has attraction, then it should continue. If it doesn't, there's so many other things for us to do and we'll continue to do those too. And this will be my final question. For Armenia to become a humanitarian hub, do we have work to do inside the country or as a nation, globally, as a whole, to understand why we need to not just adopt but own humanitarian notions? Look, we're living in a perfect, non-perfect world, right? We all want to fight against corruption, again, for human values. We want to get people to be friends to each other. And all that. So I, Let's be realistic. I think some part of the Armenians living in a delusion about El Dorado. El Dorado is a dream of something which will be paradise, everything will be perfect. And sometimes people say, how we can talk about humanitarian values when you're an Armenian, some violation. And I said, sorry guys, this is just ridiculous to hear about this. Every place we have something which needs to be improved. And exactly without talking about it, without doing something, we cannot make this better. Because I strongly believe we, we definitely uh, needs to, a lot of things change in Armenia for better, but this is part of the process which we'll be combining doing this type of global project. Yeah, I think, I mean, it's, I think it's, uh, I agree completely with what Ruben said. Um, I, th I actually would add to it though that, you know, Armenians have a very long history filled with one common thread, which is that we've had to be survivors. In fact, I sometimes refer to us as super survivors. Um, we are at our best when we are near being extinguished. Mm -hmm. uh, earthquakes, genocides, wars, religious persecution, on and on and on. We're not the only people in the world, but we've, we've been at it probably one of the longest mm -hmm. and still are a nation. Mm -hmm. The notion that that defines us, which it absolutely does, at the most basic 
I would even say, given that I come from the biology world, genetic level. In other words, all of us in this room, all of the people who are Armenian or watching, are effectively over time selected because they've become descendants of those who survived. And you do that for a few thousand years and what you get are, are nature, not just nurture, of survival. Then our stories, our songs, the lamentations that are all over our music actually gives you that sense. So you might say, what does this have to do with humanitarianism? Well, I think that we have a special opportunity and even an obligation to talk about what it is to receive humanitarian support and what it is to turn around and give it. I'll give you one quick example. Last year, the Near East Relief Foundation released a film. Near East Relief Foundation is a US-based entity that 100 years ago epitomized, the, for the first time, an organized American effort to help people outside of America at the time of need. It was how America became philanthropic outside its own borders. And they did it for Armenians, and they did it for Assyrians and others, but primarily Armenians. A hundred years later, they make a movie in which they show the connection between what happened then and modern-day refugee crisis in Europe. It seems to me, and when I say this you know, publicly, I hope people think about it, who else on the world, a hundred years later, should have felt that as a personal call to do something than Armenians? You know, people living in China haven't walked those lands, they haven't been persecuted. People living in Estonia have nothing to do with that, and yet they feel like they got to do something for refugees. This is part of our history. So I, I would say simply to those who are watching that rather than consider Armenia somehow deficient in its moral standing as a nation to deal with these things, actually to be among the most legitimate people to deal with this. And we don't have to be rich to do this. We don't have to be powerful to do this. We just have to be humans to do this. And that's, that's fully a big part of the word humanitarian is human. And I think somehow we tell ourselves that we are being arrogant. I, we have, look, we receive this, this compliment very often that we're being arrogant to actually deal with humanitarian issues when we have corruption in this country and we have needs. And, and I, just think, I just think that we need to think higher of ourselves as people and say, since we are descendants of survivors, we should take this moment, particularly with the refugee crisis, to do everything we can in honor of the people that perished when we, 100 years ago. That would be why we think Armenians should embrace this. And we need to move from survival mood to prosperity mood. Because it will be bringing us absolutely different attitudes. Moral prosperity. Yes. We're talking about moral prosperity. Yes, absolutely. Frankly, we will get moral prosperity long before we'll get financial prosperity. And while I know that kids don't eat at night with moral prosperity, the world will look at us differently if they look at us as prosperous people morally. And I think we have the, the, the historic obligation to do that. Yeah, I'll say, in the end, I will say one thing which makes me most happier. Many, many times after Aurora, I walked in the street and I some occasion met some people who just came to me and said, you know what, after Aurora, I am being Armenian, feeling differently. I'm proud to have Armenian. It's, I think, the best award we can get with Navar. Yeah, self-image. Yeah, self-confidence about yourself yeah. changes who you are, changes the feeling about who you are. We can, be, we can win in chess, we can win in this. And if, because you don't, have, you don't have to be big in this. In fact, the bigger you are, the more the world thinks of you as having some other gain. When they cannot answer, why would Armenians and Armenia ever do this, that is when it becomes humanitarian. Right? It doesn't take, if, you, if, if it doesn't hurt to do this and if you don't have other things to worry about, mm -hmm. that's not charity. That's just kind of a gain. Mm -hmm. Here, we really don't have a gain. It's just moral. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for watching.